Guys, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us. Today we're going to address uh, a topic that has been requested a lot in the channel. Yes, it has. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of comments from you guys specifically asking about what are the implications of when you change the length of the club through your setup. Yeah, gripping so down. Gripping on the down club. Yeah. versus standard length. So in the video, we're going to try and dissect that from uh, a swing delivery mechanics standpoint. See yep. you know, what actually changes. How does your path change? Your dynamic loft, your angle attack, all these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And obviously, some of those have implications on how the club performs. Of course. You know, if we change the, the playing length uh, of, of the golf club, it's going to have some, some different sort of properties from a feel and, uh, and dynamic perspective. And I would assume a shaft performs differently. You've obviously got different taper in the grip based yeah. on where you grip it. So there's going to be, I guess, choices that if there is a person that does grip down on everything, yeah. I'm assuming you actually build them a bit of a different set based on how they're hitting it. If, if you have that type of player, absolutely. I mean, I think a great um, example of that is, is Brooke Henderson with her driver. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they've, they've tried to get her to play uh, or hold our driver further up and just, um, you know, make that driver 45 inches. Sure, yeah, yeah. But she's just, you know, you can imagine, you know, Brooke is, is, a, is a junior golfer. She, you know, she's not, she's not, yeah, she's not tall. Not the tallest now, but no. can you imagine her as, as a, just a wee thing? Of course. Um, you know, every golf club would have felt long term, I'm sure. Yep. Um, Very so, true. So, you know, gripping down would have been the norm. She's playing what is basically a 45 inch golf club. Right. Maybe maybe a shade longer, but she's just starting with more uh, more golf club to begin with. To yeah. begin with, of course, that's yeah. exactly what it is. I mean, even going back, um, we probably all remember the the hugely talented uh, Anthony Kim, Anthony Kim yep. and and how much he gripped down. It's same thing, you know, wasn't wasn't the biggest guy in the world. You can imagine as a junior, you know, was just got used to gripping down. That's Very where true. his comfort level was, yep. uh, where he he sort of created the, the most consistency. So for them, I see it as a habit that develops. That's what it is. And I think for other people, the curiosity becomes, you get people looking at them and going, oh, is that how they hit it straight? Yeah. Or would I hit it straighter yeah. if I grip down? That's right. And so I kind of, the reason that we were doing this is to just sort of quantify mm -hmm. what is actually going to occur when you do that. Now, obviously it's gonna be me hitting, so it's not gonna be the same for everybody. Right. But we should be able to see with some sort of general sort of idea, what occurs when mm -hmm. you grip down on, uh, we're gonna hit an iron and a driver, yeah. see what it does. Give you guys an idea of um, the, the kind of physics, you know, and how, how the actual physics changes the delivery, the, the ball flight, yeah. you know, how does it launch and spin differently? Right. Um, so I think this will be quite interesting so you guys know exactly when you do go to, you know, knock a, a little shot down into the wind or something like that. What's actually happening exactly. uh, from a, a launch and spin and ball speed, that type of thing. All right. So, um, so let's start off with your own, your own six iron, Matty. Let's sixers. just get some baseline deliveries. Okay. And then we'll grip down some sixes. Then we're going to do the same with the driver. Good. Okay. So a couple hundred yards. We know that sets your stock. Stock yardage. Okay. And my clubs are all standard length, if anyone's asking. I don't <laughs> have anything. Yep. And you, interestingly, so look at where you, you're, you're sort of, yeah, before you adjusted that, you're, you're tending to be right of back the backhand was a little high in the grip. Yeah. So you tend to, and, and to be honest, that's where most people are. Yeah. That, I tend to feel more comfort there for yeah. whatever reason. So just, you feel the butt end just in the, the, the kind of base of your, your hand yeah. there. Draw, turn it a bit. It's okay. I tell you, it must be nice not to have a a poster stamp size yeah, green seriously. in the Pacific <laughs> Ocean. We're just sitting at the back of it. Green, green for 100 yards in every direction. It's a little bit easier on the old brain. That one was struck Roasted a bit better, just a little shot. Mm -hmm. A little shot with the face. Okay, a couple more. That's hit better. Sounded nice. So that, that one is about my ideal shot. Okay. Looking at, looking at the speed and the path, 
That is pretty much it. I mean, I've seen you hit a million shots over the last year. You hit, when you hit a six iron well, it launches about 15 and spins around 54, 5,500. Yeah. Those are your typical numbers. That is relatively high on the ball speed for you. It's You're 132 good. to 135. So that's, that's really good indication of how well you struck that. When you strike a six iron well and it's just a normal flight, you fly it 200 yards. Yeah. That, th those are your exact baseline solid six iron numbers. Absolutely. So, um, okay. So let's go, uh, we're going to change it down to uh, a six iron now. We're going to grip down to the bottom. So would you say, like, what do you think, how far down is Brooke Henderson gripping? Are we talking like an inch, two inches? She's, she's all the way down there. I mean, she is fully, I mean, it's at least, it's, it's gotta at, be at least, least two. So let's, let's try to aim for about two. Thinking about, I mean, her hands are smaller than yours true, as well. True. So, I mean, she's, she's fully down there you know, two and a half, uh, okay. two inches I'm or I'm just so gonna leave myself a little bit of grip below my left, my left yeah. hand, but you've gripped down pretty substantially here. It's at least a club difference, isn't it, when you grip down that much? This is a seven iron length at that point. And, that, and that's what we'll see. Um, so think about it, I mean, if you're, if you're gripping down that an inch and a half, you've changed the golf club by, by three club lengths. Is it that much? Half or half an inch per club. Oh, okay. So you know your six iron is now nine iron length. Right. Right. So, so there's, there's some weird stuff because I, I I'll be perfectly honest. I don't grip down in clubs ever anymore. You you change your variant. I'd speed. rather change literally anything else because my comfort level is gone. It just looks yeah. strange. Like now I feel like I have a club that's kind of weird and flat looking. That's right. And that, my, and that, just, that's the other thing. Yeah, it just looks from weird. a dynamic lie angle perspective, you're no longer dealing with the same thing. Yeah, because I'm holding it, I guess, more upright, but in fact, the club is still six iron line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why, personally, I, I've stopped doing it, because I just so, don't like the look of it. And, and you stopped doing it, but, <laughs> you know, I'd be very curious, because if we look at the ball flight in those first three, yep. you know, there's a bit of curve to that. 100%. You may see, as you shorten the club, raise the handle, the toe sits more dynamically down, mm -hmm. you hit it very straight. Pushes the ball more to the left. So you may see, you know, you've got a little wind out the left and you know you don't really want to over overcook it yep. you may shorten the club to lift the lift the shaft a little bit to right. change the dynamic angle address and you could even go up a club yeah and then do that for distance control but to push the as ball as long as you understand off. your your implications okay so i'm gripping down a solid probably inch and a half two inches here yeah and by the way you're gripping down that about Three quarters of an inch. Okay, let's go. <laughs> go down more. <laughs> that's an example of perception versus reality. Okay, that's public, good. How's that? Yeah, that big change. Okay, that that will feel like a big two. You have now, to now. I got to get closer. You'll have to scooch in a little bit on it. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, certainly it was lower, wasn't it? Yeah, very. I sort of. Um, Ended up hitting like a very sort of trappy draw there, didn't Tell it? Tell you what's the interesting thing about that though, you've, you've absolutely lost nothing. Yeah, um, maybe a mile an hour, maybe. You lost, versus your average club head speed, you've not even lost one mile an yeah, hour. Yeah, true enough. Your efficiency stayed very much the same, ball speed one, three, two. You've changed your launch angle. Um, you brought that down by a, about, if we're, if, we're, if we're using 15 as your baseline, yeah. brought, it, brought it down by nearly two and spin by, you, you did turn over those first couple. To so be fair, yeah. I'm going to call that seven, 800 RPMs of yeah. where I normally know you are. All right, so we're definitely seeing okay. something already. Yep. Okay, go a, f a little further down the grip, good. That's nice. So that's a bit of the shot okay. that I tend to hit when I Did grip you down. catch that hair heavy? Just, yeah. yeah. So that's, a, a lot of the reason I don't grip down a lot is because I, I don't know what it is. I do find that I, I sort of catch the toe down fat shot. I was going to say that, that toe down was That's was the really toe down fat shot that I can't stand hitting. Um, so you've changed your dynamic lie angle by you know, pretty much two degrees there. Substantial, right? Okay. Let's catch one a little more flush than that. That's hit well. 
I mean, it, again, it feels like I'm kind of, if I hit it well, I almost feel like I have to kind of sweep it up and, and catch it clean that way. It feels like I'm coming in, yeah, it is shallow, isn't it? 2.9 and less spin. Okay, I'm going to just take out that second one. Sure, yeah. Hit one more for me and then we'll compare. That last one would be a great wind ball though, wouldn't it? Perfect, and, and it would be, be good to actually throw a little wind on here, go back and hit the normal one is. and then see, see what the difference is. Yeah, because almost 1,000 RPMs of spin is going to be huge in the wind. Yeah, it's just me turning a bit, but good hit. Turning it a lot, I'd say. Struck well, though. Okay. So that was 97. Yeah, he struck that really nicely. So swing speed might be down a bit, but it's not crazy, is it? It's not, it's not too much. It's, it's, sh it's about two miles an hour down. Angle of attack, interestingly, hasn't really changed, and path on average hasn't really changed for you either. Yeah. Your biggest difference is your dynamic uh, uh, lie angle change. Yeah. So you've, you've dropped it a little bit more toe down. Yeah. You deliver a little bit less loft. Okay. So that is, uh, so that's obviously going to change the way your, it. your spin profile a little bit on it. So Interesting. Yeah, you're, you're more like the kind of mid fours rather than low fives. Very interesting. You would expect at some point, maybe, because a lot of it is, and I think everyone will find this, I'm probably making some compensations yeah. to not swing too much more differently. Mm -hmm. But when you choke down, you have the short club that has not much loft. Yeah. It's weird. Like there's something weird about that when you look at it. Mm -hmm. A six iron that's essentially a nine iron length. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And so maybe you're not making quite the same swing. Yeah. But would you expect that someone would generally be a little steeper? Do, do this for me. We've made this, we actually made this pretty uh, difficult on you because we actually, we never changed the target. Okay. That we should have really changed the target. So shorter. we've asked you to hit it 200 yards with, a, with an eight iron shaft right. in there. Right. Okay, so let's, let's, let's change that. We're going to go 185. Okay. The funny thing is, <laughs> and I play with a couple people that do this, they do tend to hit a slice as their miss. And they often will choke up trying to hit the ball straighter. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone that slices it and you choke up, I'm assuming you're likely going to make that worse because you're going to get a little bit more upright. Yeah, and, and, and that's, the, that's the beauty and also the complexity of this. Yeah. It could very well go, go both ways. I think yeah. the, the player who, who has a longer club and struggles with a slice for the right-hander may well take the club more in the inside, come and more over come the top. Over. Oh, Whereas okay. short in the club, they can kind of make a little bit more of a compact, mm. keep it on playing a little easier, contact improves, so they don't get the glance and blow as much. So It's not cut and dry then, is, is it? Is, yeah, we, you're someone where we can isolate it to dynamic lie angle. Right. Whereas some players who have less consistent path and, and swing plane, maybe struggle a little bit more. So yeah, th this, will be, this will be a good one for us to, if we go 185. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna have to dial this back fully uh, 10, 12%. 15 yards or so, yeah, okay. So not hit very well, again. Toey. Lost some ball speed on that, I'm sure. I mean, it wasn't an awful shot, I yeah. guess, result-wise. Yeah, you just you just caught a f just a fraction, <laughs> fraction heavy. Yeah, that's that's hit well. Yeah, that's good. Okay, curious about that one. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit a little bit steeper, four and a half. Mm -hmm. We were we were closer to three, I guess. Yeah. Previously. It's really knocking a lot of spin off of it, isn't it? Yeah, your ball speed's down a little bit. Okay, a couple more. Good. Keep going. Keep, there you go. Nice. That's, about, that's, that's a f an inch and a quarter, I'd say. Okay. Hit that well, too. <clears throat> That's really nice. You've controlled that flight really, really nicely there. Like that's a perfect wind ball. I yeah. love, that's the kind of shot I love to hit. 
So really for you, that, that is a good win ball because you, you've not really changed your, la uh, your launch angle much. You've just, you've just taken a bit of spin off it. Right. That's, that's the biggest change that happened there because your delivery really is very normal for, for where you are. Dynamic uh, loft to 20. Okay. Four downs a bit steeper. Yeah. Um, but in actual fact, yeah, I mean, you, your spin loft window is actually a fraction uh, larger here because you've hit more down on it with more loft than you oh, did with your okay. own. Yeah. If we look at your, your normal delivery, uh, dynamic angle is 19.3 in those last couple were around 20. So, Interesting. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot more variables than you might think. We've yeah, definitely the, lost, the obvious ones, we've lost a bit of speed. Yep. You, you knew that would happen. That's it. A couple mile an hour. For sure. So I think, I think the key is for so many people, the takeaway is understand sort of your, your, your tendencies. For you, Matty, the biggest thing we've seen is, is really dynamic lie angle. From mm. a delivery standpoint, um, and look at that. So as we, as we asked less of the, the distance, mm. your dynamic lie angle actually improved slightly. Interesting. Because you didn't have to uh, try as hard to make that go 200 yards. Say the, se the sequencing was probably a bit better and my hands mm -hmm. were probably a little bit less high. Yeah. Interesting. And then dynamic lie angle, Matt, is one we'll, we'll get into more in, in the next few weeks. I want to do some stuff on that. And, yeah. Um, because I think, I think there's a lot of people kind of maybe are seeing our videos, seeing when we talk about lie angle changes. And, you know, I've have seen some comments about, you know, woods and, and, and sort of drivers yeah. and lie angles and that. Because and, there's not as much adjustability in a wood. True. So when people are seeing, you know, the club come in seven, eight degrees toe up, which isn't uncommon. With a driver. They're, they're, they're kind of getting a little bit uh, kind of confused with that, mm. but not really understanding that. You know, if we, if we use this as a club face, if we, if we lose the loft, so we use that there, so there's some loft there. If, if we lose some loft, but we tilt that head, the less loft we have, the less implications there are on the okay. dynamic lie angle. So if, so if we make this like a, you know, a 50 de 56 degree wedge, tilt it, it's going really to really changing. tilt the face. So, so that's where lie angle and wedge is, exactly. Okay. So you do that with a, a wood right. and tilt the, the face of a, you know, a nine degree or seven or eight degree lofted driver. It doesn't affect it nearly the same way. Interesting. So we'll, we'll do some stuff on that and we'll, we'll kind of show people how dynamic lie angle is, Change. is changeable with how much loft you deliver. Do you want to try a few drivers? Let's then? try some drivers. Okay. Okay, Matty, a few drivers. Let's see what we see uh, with the, the change of, of club length. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more. We never really, the only thing we never really discussed when we had irons there was we didn't really ch uh, discuss the, the change in weight and feel of the club. So yeah, we can get into that we'll, too. We'll talk a little bit more about that stuff. Okay. Yeah, because you're going to have, a, I guess, effective swing weight differences? Definitely. Okay. All right, so starting with the standard grip. That's hit really well. Fairly spinny though, mid to, mid two thousands. Yeah, it's different for me, that's for sure. Strike was good. It was actually a little bit, uh, yeah. a little bit high. When you lit, definitely yeah, twenty five hundred, you've hit that. Literally on the equator of the club. Yeah. So you know we can see that dynamic lie angle, like I was talking about. You know it's it's still t it's tore up. Yep. Um, which most drivers you know will, will typically be. Um, a little bit toe up, so It'd take a pretty like extreme delivery to not have the club be toe up. You'd have it to be would, really yeah, standing. A up. lot of handle lift. Yeah. I mean, I see it, but you know, not not all that often. Gotcha. Yeah, that that last one was excellent, yeah. and definitely seen that you know a little change to your delivery, not as much up as you've been, and changing T height is has got you in a really nice. Yeah, really I mean, nice launching spot. at fourteen is very different for me. If you have those launch conditions at around 13, 8 and 2500, you will hit the driver so straight you won't yeah. believe it. Yeah. It might not be as long um, as, as you could, I mean 330 is still plenty long, but yeah. you know, compared to the, 
the 360s where you kind of launch it up with less spin. Where we tee it up a bit higher and hit this part of the head. Yeah. 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 Okay. So why don't we take that, those last couple as a good example. Okay. And then we'll hit some choked up ones. Okay. So gripping down a solid inch and a half, two inches. Couple inches there for sure. And we've got the tee down a little bit, which most people would do if, if they were gripping down on yep, a matty, just, just to try and make sure they find that fair weight. Sounded a fraction high in the head. It was, for sure. A little surprised considering where the tee was, but mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So there's, there's what's going to move the, uh, the strike up the head when you lean the shaft further forward. Okay. That's, so that's another reason you really want to tee the driver down. So if, if you're gripping down it and delivering less dynamic loft, yep. Um, and also angle of attack is, yeah, so less, less up. So essentially by gripping down, I came in a little steeper yeah. and presented less loft. Exactly. It's interesting. So well, gripping down tends to make someone get a little bit ahead of it. Can do, way. yeah. Especially yeah. If, you're, if you're trying to kind of just squeeze one out into the fairway. Right. You know, you're, you're not really set and then going to be as shallow. I mean, for you, that's from where I'm used to seeing you, 3.3 is half of your normal upward angle attack. Can be, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, we're changing dynamic lie angle, we are changing delivered loft and changing speed. Huh. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things changing for you when it comes to uh, driver delivery. Okay, Let's see a couple more. Love that one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's one of my favorites. Nice That strike. has a bit more spin to it, but it's very balanced in its flight. It's it really, really interesting. Well I would expect to be striking these low, but it makes sense what you're saying. Yeah. The way that it's leading is going to bring the strike up higher. It's really interesting. Definitely. Using the, the gear effect. I mean, you literally can't hit a better one for me no, than that. Perfect. That's That's absolutely money. So we got what we expected. Three, four mile an hour slower um, club speed. Yeah. Translated to the ball speed but I really did not expect to see it spin less. That's really yeah. interesting. Through, uh, yeah, through, through, through strike, strike and, and obviously the, um, the delivered loft was less, mm -hmm. so we launched it lower. Yep. Yeah, that's... Yeah, so, uh, you know, understanding, understanding strike point and, and really gear effect implications, um, you know, understanding the, the loft is ever changing on the head yes. as, as the, the curvature of, of the, the face um, plays its role so you know your 10 degree uh, you know is, is 10 in the middle but you know 11 point something in the top and okay. 9 point something it maybe maybe even as low as kind of eight high eights maybe 8.5 to 8.8 .8 in the bottom right so you've, you've got that roll that vertical roll on the, the club face that does change the loft so if I'm gripping down obviously the head is effectively playing at a lighter swing weight yep and that's a big consideration if, like for me, I, I'm dialed in with the swing weight of this Definitely. at a normal grip. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone that wants to try gripping down, would you say they almost need to maybe have it potentially rebalanced before you do that? Depends if they, uh, yeah, I, I would say know, know your club's weight from a standpoint that if it's already light when you uh, are gripping it at full length, okay. You definitely don't, you want to address that because if you are someone who grips down, yeah. you, you've got to know what you're doing with it. You'll so make it worse. We, we, we go back to, uh, you know, Callaway Rogue, not to pick on Callaway right. by any means, but just knowing that that's a light club head yep. is potentially going to make that a problem. From okay. a, a, swing po a swing weight standpoint, you know, um, TPT is, 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 is quite heavy in the tip section. Yeah, you've mentioned that before. Uh, with, with the ping head, we know it's heavy in the head this is quite a high uh, high swing weight golf club so right. gripping down on this one is, is, is absolutely doable whereas on, on others so if you've got something like an Aldila X torsion yep. with a rogue uh, which is counterbalance with a, a rogue standard rogue head it's 190 grams you'll struggle with the consistency oh, okay. of that because you're dropping the swing weight so much okay very interesting yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's not quite what I expected so far, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's not quite what I expected. I just Excuse figured me. I would kind of bottom all of them know, and they yeah. sort of spin off to the left. It's, 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 some of the, it's some of the delivery implications that 
um, that we use to our advantage, Matty, in all honesty. If we see certain things, like if we see someone you know, struggling with an inconsistent angle of attack, we might get them to grip down on it a little bit and tee it a bit lower, just to standardise that mm. delivery and then it breeds that consistency that can help, you know, calm the player down, settle them down in the fit where they can make good contact and right. uh, that type of thing. There's, you just, understanding these variables are really important. Oh, for sure. I don't think we've seen a um, change much in the consistency of the strike. No. From gripping. But for some people, you may grip down and hit it a lot more solid. Well, actually, if anything, you actually struck the, your normal ones lower than the head. In a better than, spot, than this one. I guess. Yeah, you well. A better relative to yeah, what you're trying to you, do. You would have probably thought that was flip reverse. You would have thought that um, when you were hitting it normally, you were hitting it uh, high in the head, yeah. then you gripped down on it, you hit it lower in the head, but That's it's been the opposite. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Right. Do you want to do one for me where you hit it slightly low in the head? Okay. That's the one right there. Yeah, such a good flight, Matty's. Just a little bit more spin, like we can see there, 2400 backspin, launching it at 11.9. Uh, it's really good. Really, really good. So let's, let's look at the analysis page, do a little, little comparison. Um, so as we would exactly expect, tighter dispersion. For sure. Uh, with, the, with the gripping down. Especially so distance-wise, it seemed to actually regulate a lot you know, mm -hmm. how far the ball was going relative to your next shot. And, and look at your, your change in flight. So if you're into a bit of a meaty headwind, um, you know, if you want to flight that down a little bit, I mean, even though the spin's a little bit higher, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of feeling like you gain that control a little bit more, you know, 20 yards of difference. In, That's in, amazing, uh, yeah. Carry. Yeah, I mean, I think the question that a lot of people are going to have, fair enough, is... You know, I choke down on my driver, I end up hitting it further. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're someone who's having trouble making good contact, yeah. or you're contacting the wrong part of the head for distance, mm -hmm. then absolutely, I think this test could have been different. Yeah. But I don't see a situation where you would swing faster, or swing even the same, when you grip down that much. I mean, yeah. that was, what's that? That's five miles an hour club head speed. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. So maybe if you were making terrible contact, gripped at the full length, and then you all of a sudden started making quite good contact, mm -hmm then I guess I can see how that would be. But yeah. for most people, I think you can, you can subtly change contact consistency, but you're going to lose some distance choking down. Definitely. Um, you know, a shallower angle of, uh, sorry, shallower, uh, uh, a more neutral angle of attack at 3.4 right. up. Um, dynamic loft, a degree less. I mean, hmm. it's just, you're just going to, you're going to hit something that's just a little bit, more neutral um, and, and also from a face angle standpoint typically getting a little bit closer to zero uh, or getting less on the angle of attack will make the face angle a little bit easier to control okay. uh, yep. as well for a lot of people so um, we saw your dynamic lie angle come down we will get into that in another video but we'll talk about how that matters That's a little bit less on on woods than it does on let's say wedges and mm. next thing we do we will we will change the lie angle on the wedge and we'll watch how difficult it is mm. for you to to then hit it online if your uh, lie angle is off yes, with the, the wedges yep. very very important but um a yeah, good little test it was, it was definitely in some ways what I expected. I knew, well, I, I didn't know for sure, but I suspected a lower ball flight mm -hmm. and less distance. Yep. The, spin, the spin being so much different is not something that I, I, I kind of expected to see a higher spin shot, both with the iron and the driver. Because mm -hmm. I just assumed you would kind of get really steep and start kind of kicking the spin up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it is a viable way for you to knock a bit of, it should be a mm -hmm. good way to knock some spin off into the wind. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think, that what you saw early on in the, 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 the grip down um, part of it was the change in, in delivered loft, wasn't it? And how delivered right. loft changed the height of the, the strike. So what I wasn't expecting was the fact that I was leaning yeah. the club more than I was at, at normal grip. Definitely. Rate. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you were hitting up less with more forward shaft lean, which mm. is going to move the strike up the head. Up the head and then flatten down. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. There are, there are so many various variables with this that it's actually ridiculous. Like, I can't imagine sorting this out on mm -hmm. your own where you're out on the golf course and saying, okay, I'm going to grip down on this yeah. and just hit that shot. you got to be aware that you grip down on your 8-iron, all of a sudden it's flatter, and you might take some spin off it and you might hit a flatter shot. Like, you got to be aware of what it's actually going to do. I hear so many people, you know, talking about, oh, you know, you got to go in the range and figure out 
Definitely, you know, mm -hmm. that's like that's where you're going to find out. But there's so much value to coming actually coming indoors I as agree. well and validating your feels with some numbers. Yep. It's kind of like calibrating your swing. I agree, yeah. So doing a little calibration, you know, where are you at? What happens if I do this? What mm. happens if I do that? And understanding the implications. You're as good a golfer as, as, as you know, we'll see in here. And there was some things there that really surprised you. Sure. But now that's, that's more knowledge is, is more power Absolutely. in that you understand the implications of your delivery so much better. Now you're, you're more knowledgeable about your impact mm -hmm. um, sort of parameters than, than you were at the start. Oh, That's sure. really, really important to becoming a better player. Yeah, I think if you're gonna be trying to hit different shots in the course, seeing the data behind it yeah. is important. Definitely. Because when you're out on the golf course, yes, you can analyze mm -hmm. how your divots were in your ball flight, yeah. but for me to know exactly how much my lie angle was changing and my spin rates and things like that, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a learning experience. Definitely. Good, excellent. Well, guys, hopefully this has provided some value and given you a little insight into some of the things obviously that can happen when you grip up and down, but also some of the things that we have to consider um, when we're fitting. There's a reason fitting has evolved away from being sta a bunch of static measurements. Right. Yeah. You know, rest of floor, you know, all these sorts of things. Um, you know, what's your height, your hands. It's like, th those, are, those are fine as baseline, um, you know, sort of baseline numbers, but it's, it's a dynamic motion. Yes. And, and not every swing is going to be the same and you change one thing and five other things can change around it. So um, you need this extra set of eyes. If you have the ability to have something like gears like we now have, yep. these types of things just do nothing but give us more knowledge about what's going on and, and help you get more dialed in uh, than you ever have before. And it's just, it's just more sets of eyes uh, on, on the swing from, from more different parameters. Yeah, yeah. so hopefully that helped. There's a bunch of people that, that did ask, you know, basically what does gripping mm -hmm. down do? Um, hopefully we've kind of given you the ball flight characteristics. There's obviously some, yeah. some things you have to consider for the build, which we've talked a little bit about. Definitely. But if you have any more questions, feel free to let us know and we'll, we'll dive in the comments with we you. We sure will. Excellent. Okay. Good stuff. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.